Hello students, welcome to Allen Digital. Today we will be learning about one of the important topics of cellular respiration that is citric acid cycle. Now you know that during the cellular respiration we study that how glucose is broken into multiple steps to release energy. The first step is glycolysis wherein a 6 carbon 1 molecule glucose is broken into 3 carbon 2 molecules of pyruvic acid. That pyruvic acid will be entering into the link reaction to form 2 carbon acetyl coenzyme A. Now during glycolysis what enters is a single molecule of glucose 6 carbon. What we get is 3 carbon pyruvic acid. Now each pyruvic acid will give us 2 carbon acetyl coenzyme A. Now let us study what happens to that acetyl coenzyme A. In the link reaction from 1 pyruvic acid we get 1 molecule of 2 carbon acetyl coenzyme A. So next is the Krebs cycle. Like link reaction this also occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria. Now this is also called TCA cycle, tricarboxylic acid cycle. Why? Because we get first molecule citric acid which contains 3 COOH group. That's why tricarboxylic acid cycle. It is also called citric acid cycle because the first compound which is formed is citric acid. Now in this process we will be seeing that there are various intermediary products are formed which are 6 carbon, 1 is 5 carbon and 4 carbon compound. This occurs after the link reaction. So from glycolysis we had pyruvic acid that was broken into, converted into acetyl coenzyme A in the matrix of the mitochondria. That acetyl coenzyme A will be starting the Krebs cycle. All the enzymes which are required for the Krebs cycle are present in the mitochondrial matrix except one succinate dehydrogenase that is partially embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Mark it, it's important. What is the site of Krebs cycle? Mitochondrial matrix. Where are the enzymes present? Inside the matrix of the mitochondria. Now, except one succinate dehydrogenase which is partially embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now, what happens is, why Krebs cycle is seen only in mitochondria? Mitochondrial DNA, it has its genes, those genes are coding for these enzymes. That's why it is restricted inside the matrix of mitochondria, unlike glycolysis, which occur in the cell cytoplasm. Now, before we begin this cycle, let us know about few points. Wherever there will be decarboxylation, decarboxylation that means removal of carbon in the form of CO2. We will study that at two stages carbon is removed in the form of CO2. So, wherever there is decarboxylation, there is removal of a CO2. Wherever there is dehydrogenation, and the enzyme used for dehydrogenation is the substrate it is acting upon. That substrate add an is dehydrogenase. Wherever you see dehydrogenase, there removal of H plus and there we will see the formation of NADH2. At three places we will see the formation of NADH2 and at one place we will see the formation of FADH2. So basically during the Krebs cycle, there will be dehydrogenation and decarboxylation. Now there are steps wherein dehydrogenation and decarboxylation will occur simultaneously. Then we use the term complex, dehydrogenase complex. At one step there will be substrate level phosphorylation also. You know that substrate level phosphorylation means if there is a molecule A, when it is getting converted into molecule B, Directly there is formation of ATP, that substrate level phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation, the molecules like NADH2 and FADH2, they will enter electron transport chain via electron transport chain. One NADH2 will give us 3 ATP and one FADH2 will give us 2 ATP. 
This is in short the summation of Krebs cycle. Let us begin with the Krebs cycle. Now why is it called Krebs cycle? Because it was discovered by Hans Krebs. Hence to honor him Krebs cycle and he won a Nobel Prize for that. Now the first acceptor of acetyl coenzyme A will be oxaloacetic acid. So we will be seeing that acetyl coenzyme A which is a two carbon compound will react with the four carbon oxaloacetic acid to form six carbon citric acid. I have already told you this that if we see dehydrogenation at three places there will be formation of NADH and at one place there will be formation of FADH and these two via electron transport chain will give us ATP. There will also be SLP substrate level phosphorylation which will give us GTP. The fate of GTP I will be showing it to you and then wherever there is decarboxylation there is release of CO2. Now let us begin with the citric acid cycle. So it is a cycle whatever is formed will be again reused for the next reaction. Here we are going to learn it with one acetyl coenzyme A. But remember when a molecule of glucose is broken we get two molecules of pyruvic acid. So that means from one molecule of glucose we are getting two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A. So here we have oxaloacetic acid which along with the acetyl coenzyme A will form citric acid. Now how do you remember the enzyme? What is being synthesized? Citric acid, so enzyme is citrate, synthase, simple. A 4 carbon and a 2 carbon compound, 4 plus 2 is 6 carbon citric acid is formed. Coenzyme A is returned. Now see here, this citric acid in the presence of enzyme aconitase will lose water. So this process is dehydration and will get converted into aconitic acid, cis-aconitic acid. Again, cis-aconitic acid in the presence of enzyme aconitase will form isocitric acid. Now, pay attention here. What is the fate of isocitric acid? The enzyme is isocitrate dehydrogenase. That means what will be removed? Hydrogen. When hydrogen is removed, at this step we will see, this is the first step wherein we will see the formation of NADH formation, NADH2. In the presence of enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase. So I can also frame the question in another manner that isocitric acid when it is converted into oxalosuccinic acid, what is the reaction which is occurring there? It is a dehydrogenation step. An enzyme is dehydrogenase taking the hydrogen from isocitric acid hence the name isocitrate dehydrogenase pretty simple right. So now we have 6 carbon oxalosuccinic acid that will be converted into alpha ketoglutaric acid by the enzyme decarboxylase. What is happening here? Decarboxylase removal of CO2. So what is happening? Decarboxylation reaction. So from a 6 carbon compound if I remove 1 carbon what is left? 5 carbon. That is the only 5 carbon compound present in the entire citric acid cycle. Alpha ketoglutaric acid. Got it? So we have seen our first dehydrogenation step which is from isocitric acid to oxalosuccinic acid and this is the first decarboxylation step of citric acid. So a question can be framed that way. Where does the first decarboxylation occurs? In the citric acid when oxalosuccinic acid gets converted into alpha ketoglutaric acid. Now this alpha ketoglutaric acid it will be acted upon by dehydrogenase complex enzyme. That means what will be occurring here? There are two simultaneous reactions. One is release of 
H plus ion and also release of carbon in the form of CO2. So, see here again coenzyme A will be added alpha keto deutero dehydrogenase complex. So, what is happening here? CO2 is released, decarboxylation, since H plus is released here, dehydrogenation and what is formed? NADH2. So, this is the second place where in the NADH2 is formed. Now, let us see that alpha ketoglutric acid will be converted into from a 5 carbon compound. Again, I have removed a single carbon group. So, what is left? 4 carbon succinyl coenzyme A. Where did this coenzyme A come from? It is added by the alpha ketoglutero dehydrogenase enzyme. Now, this succinyl coenzyme A will lose its coenzyme A and again in the presence of thiokinase will undergo substrate level phosphorylation and will form the succinic acid. There is no further decarboxylation now. So, succinic acid is 4 carbon, succinyl coenzyme A is also 4 carbon, there is no decarboxylation. But what is happening over here? Substrate level phosphorylation, a GTP is formed. When this reaction occurs, the energy released is used to form GTP. But our requirement is ATP. It is mentioned in NCRT that in a coupled reaction, this GTP will give its phosphorus to ADP and will form ATP. That is why from GTP through a coupled reaction, we will have our adenosine triphosphate. Hence, substrate level phosphorylation. Now, succinic acid will be converted into fumaric acid. This is the enzyme succinate dehydrogenase. It is going to remove hydrogen, but this hydrogen is given to FAD. And here, only here, we see the formation of FADH2. During the process of glucose being broken, we see at various steps dehydrogenation process and every time we have seen the formation of NADH2. If it is oxidative phosphorylation, this is the first step and the only step that to in Krebs cycle wherein FADH2 is formed. Now, after this fumaric acid will convert into malic acid in the presence of enzyme fumarase. Now, again water is added, it is a hydration process. Now, malic acid will be converted into oxaloacetic acid. Now, again malate dehydrogenase will act here, which will remove the hydrogen and form a molecule of NADH2. So, as you can notice here, at four places we have seen dehydrogenation process. Three steps form NADH2, one step forms FADH2 and at one place we see the substrate level phosphorylation. All these NADH2 and the single FADH2 will enter electron transport chain. One molecule of NADH2 will give us 3 ATP. And one FADH2 will give us 2 ATP. So, per cycle of Krebs cycle, what are we having? 3 NADH2 and 1 FADH2. So, 3 into 3, we have 9 ATP and 2 ATP from FADH2 and 1 ATP from substrate level phosphorylation, which is 12 ATPs. This I will multiply by 2. Why? Because during glycolysis, what did I get? I got two molecules of pyruvic acid. This is from one acetyl coenzyme A. So, from two molecules of pyruvic acid, we will be having two molecules of acetyl coenzyme A. So, 12 into 2. Now, what is the ATP generation through the one glucose if it is entering the Krebs cycle? Only in the Krebs cycle, 24 ATP. Why are two acetyl coenzyme A? Now, here I will give you a trick to remember the steps because there are a lot of steps here. Citric acid is only 
Krebs starting substrate for mitochondrial oxidation. Let me write that here. If you remember this mnemonics, you will remember the entire step. Citric acid C, citric acid is formed, is A acid A, aconitic acid, is I, isocitric acid, only O, oxalosuccinic acid, Krebs K, alpha ketoglutric acid, S, succinyl coenzyme A, substrate S, succinic acid, for F, fumaric acid, Mitochondrial M, malic acid, oxidation O, oxaloacetic acid. So this is our Krebs cycle. From 1 acetyl coenzyme A, we get 12 ATPs. From 2 acetyl coenzyme A, we will be getting 24 ATPs. That's it about the Krebs cycle. Thank you.